Mr. Ron Nogara joins us. Long time no talk. You're very welcome. How are you, Joel? How are you? So even just glancing at the papers today and uh, listening to various people talking in the aftermath yesterday, this is being talked about as one of the great test matches. Would you go along with all that? Yeah, would you? I think it was... um, I was there actually in the ground and I think it's great to actually see it live in front of you um, because it's so much better than the angles you get in television and you just can feel... um, the intensity and, and where the space is or the lack of space in certain cases yesterday and then just the work off the ball. Uh, it was some some brilliant, um, I suppose, viewing um, and huge, um, I suppose, uh, topics of interest that have come forward as a result of 46 minutes ball and play. I think usually it's six minutes more than any other, other game and I think with that regard it was probably... Um, there's a new may, way, potentially, uh, looking at the game from yesterday, how we big, break down big physical teams. You know, I think the guys who tried yesterday were probably um, the guys in green that had insane fitness levels, uh, no more so than Hugo Keane and I think at 15, who um, had a had a huge game for me and Caelan Doris at number eight, obviously, was the standout for everybody. But... Um, you know, Ring Ross has taken his game to a new level, and um, it was uh, it was, I suppose, so unique in the fact that there were so little errors in the game. Uh, yet, uh, it wouldn't be a shock to anybody here to say if Ireland scored eight tries, uh, because they were probably held up over the line four times, and then there was probably three occasions where they were one pass away um, from uh, scoring. And but that they probably obviously, um, as we now know, one try the low try should have been disallowed for foot and touch. Yeah, uh, your point about those bigger men not thriving the way the Hugo Keenan body types uh, are thriving. Uh, two thoughts on that. One, could you see France rethinking six two split when they play Ireland? And uh, secondly. France uh, maybe played into those slimmer Irish hands in a way because they were the number one kicking team in the championship last year. They didn't kick the ball as much yesterday. Ireland actually kicked more than them, which which goes against mm. the grain of these two sides. And what's more, France kept the ball in play a lot. I mean, it was like France said, well, we, it was like a team saying, we back our fitness the way they approached it. It was quite striking. Yeah, it was. Just, I suppose, on the 6-2, uh, yeah. to get straight to the point, they don't look upon it as that. They look at it as a, um, you know I mean, nearly a 6-3. So McAloo, in their eyes, has the capacity to play just as he, with ease on the wing. Okay. So they don't ever look upon it as only going with uh, two backs. So, you I mean, the big advantage when you can do that from a management point of view is that you stack your team up front and only two of your forwards have to, have to play 80 which is a big, big advantage. Uh, while, um, you mean, if there's an early injury in the backs, obviously Jalibert goes in for them and then McAlew would be the next person who, uh, because of, I suppose, his physical abilities, he could comfortably play on the wing. Yes. Uh, but at test level, I'm not too sure, can he? But uh, it isn't a weakness. And then, yes, I think, uh, uh, interestingly, on the on the kicking meters, I I agree with you, Joe. I think um, you know you think all these uh, stables or these groups are impenetrable, and criticism doesn't get to them. I think France had probably enough of criticism about they're the team that kicking the ball the most, but I think they overplayed in their half just to make a point, which nice. is normally uh, what they're very good at. Uh, and I think as a result of the high ball and play time and overplaying in their own half, I think they didn't have energy for um, for probably the attack zone, uh, apart from obviously the unstructured play where DuPont was still a menace all afternoon. That's interesting. Were they being criticised in the French media for kicking the ball too much? Yeah, there was definitely obviously... Uh, because obviously they're you know you have to respect what they've done they've gone 14 games um, but nearly nowadays people aren't happy because they've gone a 14 game run and they, there's always an angle into some some team and with England I think or sorry with France they became 
fascinated with possession for kind of games one to probably 10 of, of that campaign and then for the November games and uh, um, throughout the build up to the uh, Six Nations it was more deep possession which means kicking it and yeah. backing their you know, their kind of uh, blue wall of 13 defenders and two in the backfield Interesting. Uh, but yeah, they were. Uh, you know, there's huge, huge, huge interest in in obviously the World Cup, but the Six Nations also. And uh, I think just as a as an aside, you got a taste of of what the atmosphere and the uh, the mood and ambiance will be like going forward oh, six months. Because yeah. at times it felt like a home game for France well, yesterday. They, they had ten thousand apparently in the stadium, and we more than heard them. So uh, again just on that kicking point to wrap, put a bow on it last year France kicked the most in the Six Nations Ireland kicked the least but yesterday Ireland had 38 kicks to France's 35 I'm uh, asking you to speculate a touch here but is your sense that Galtier and the management team were happy for the team to kick less and run it more or do you actually think the players themselves almost from deep said right let's jouer jouer and show everyone what we're about and went off script a touch No I don't think so because um it was interesting, just because uh, uh, I read a few of the reports post game, and um, Galti had come out and said that we've overplayed our hand, and probably in the Amber D zone, which is the kind of twenty-two to the fifty meter defensive zone, mm. uh, and then um, kind of Entomac uh, obviously was interviewed probably at the same time, and he contradicted that in the fact that he said, that, "Well, we wouldn't have got Penos try if we didn't play or chance our arm from." Yes. Uh, deep, yeah. just deep inside their 22 because you don't practice those things batting the ball along the ground and then just individual brilliance and yeah you get a bit of a, a push off and a, uh, and a missed tackle and then you know the, the deceptive I suppose speed of Peno but that's that's French rugby in a, in, a, in a nutshell I think what I think um, sprung to mind for me was basically with the pace of the game being so intense yeah. you know in the five meter line out uh, just the I think it was Jalange who didn't expect the ball knock on that's yeah. a huge mm. moment um, so it was probably just the, the Ireland's ability to consistently keep uh, France under pressure with their foot on the on the throat with a high ball and play time tall dividends and um, I think you know, reflecting on the game, it wouldn't have been um, an injustice at all if Ireland had finished 52-19. Yes. What did you like most about Irish play then in particular? I just loved the composure of the team from number one to 23, the, I suppose, whatever you call them, the deciders or the finishers having a great impact on the game because a lot of people in the public think that it's one to 15. These guys, 16 to 23, have more importance and from where Ireland want to get to for winning a World Cup, the the, the, the nine and ten um, replacements uh, didn't miss a beat, added to the game. And that's what you you want. You don't want to fill a gap. You want to add. And I felt everyone that came off the bench added, and that's so important to the mentality of the team. But they were there was an air of confidence looking at them, uh, even when France went ahead. I mean, for Ireland to reply within probably two minutes is a big statement. Mm. Usually in those games, it takes a little bit of time to get the energy back and get the get get the flow back into your game. But Ireland uh, just counterattacked straight away, and, and and Lowe's try was given within two minutes of, of the Peno try, which is quite a big statement. Um, so, um, you know, I think um, there is great detail in Ireland's forward play. I think their attacking rock looks very good, but also. Uh, I think you can't underestimate the, um, I suppose, the strict discipline of keeping the ball with some um, amazing um, imagination in the attack play. You look at uh, Johnny's break up the left-hand side and a, a beautifully flawed pass into anticipated space. Yes. Uh, Caelan Doris looks like, uh, a guy who has more seconds on the ball than anyone I've seen, either a back or a forward, the the pass, and obviously the weight of the pass is very, very important when you're offloading for, for the recipient. So the sympathy in the pass that he delivers is very, very interesting. Um, but also, I suppose, there are variety to just batter against the blue wall and then play out the back of that. And then 
um, they're just um, repeat efforts. They're an incredibly fit, yeah. incredibly fit team. And that's now two matches, if you take South Africa in November and France yesterday, two games where Ireland have managed to do just fine against the bigger team, which had been one of the big concerns hanging over this group. Yeah, I think there's no comparison between South Africa and, and France for me in that regard. I think the performances were poles apart. Uh, you know I mean, France came to Dublin, they played, but they got outplayed by a, a fitter, smarter, um, unrelenting team. Mm. While the performance in November, um, even against Australia and South Africa, as well as they did to eke out a victory in difficult, probably, conditions. Um, uh, yesterday was oh, a real battle, battle of yeah. heavyweights, exactly. Yeah, uh, I saw the point was made um, even in media Olympique during the week. Apparently, Galtier not thrilled with how many minutes his players have, the top 14 being a very demanding league, as you would well know. And there was a graphic where only four... Irish players had more minutes than their opposite number. I think it was Ringrose, Ryan, Tyke Byrne and Porter. But otherwise, the Irish team far better rested than their top 14 counterparts. Now, will, will that be the case come World Cup? Are you expecting a, a, almost a fresher France if, if it is Ireland-France in a quarterfinal or, or do you put much stock on that stat? Um, well, there's an argument for however way you want to use it. I think one of the highest minutes on both sides is Ringrose. He is, yeah. And he's probably playing the best rugby of his life uh, comfortably. I think he's added so many more uh, aspects to his game and his try was uh, was hugely deserved for not alone all the work and unseen work he did uh, yesterday, but also in, in, in previous games. You know, I think it's nice when someone like that gets the reward in a huge game uh, because there was huge finishing in it just to dispose of Jalibert comme ça. Mm. Or sorry, like that, and um, and then to you know you have the confidence and all. So that's Makalu coming. Makalu, I'd say, would run the hundred meters in eleven seconds. So he's no slouch. He, there's a potential to strip the ball there. Mm. You know what I mean? While a lot of people would be just dive down, but he also was thinking of like, okay, we need seven here, not five. So respect for his kicker by going and running around by those three or four meters yes. makes a big difference. And it becomes with Ross Burns capability off the tee it, it, it's uh, astounding now that nearly any kick is, is, is a gimme you know yeah. and that's he's put himself in a probably a territory where very few players in the world are in that regard because off the bench or in a tight game uh, it's a wonderful it's like you know a guy hitting 99 out of 100 fairways yeah. doesn't miss yeah so minutes aren't hurting ring rows. That's that's a very fair point. On uh, yeah, I, on, on on Ross Byrne, is he is he rubber stamping his place now as Johnny's replacement in your eyes? Oh yeah, most definitely. I think because these games um, speak loudly, especially with all due respect. That that's the top tier of European rugby yesterday. There isn't a, a bigger examination. You know, there's people who could pick holes in it if it's an Italian or Scottish or a Welsh team, uh, but England or France. Uh, these are incredibly difficult games and, and, and the game still had to be won yeah. at 55 minutes it could have gone either way why, 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 was he, why was he out in the cold for so long then if, we're all so, if it's all so obvious to us now um, I think um, probably perception of the general public perception of um, but Andy Farrell doesn't of, worry about the general public he was out in the cold in Farrell's no, eye no, no. But I think, you know, it's it's on record that they've had discussions. He has worked in areas of his game. And I think you watch him playing for Leinster. He has added uh, a lot more to his game mm. than he would have uh, he, he would have had. And, and uh, uh, you know, a small thing like being a threat himself, uh, even though it's one work on, it has huge implications for the defenders inside him, the defenders opposite him and the defenders outside him so for people saying like just I mean that capacity to take on the line the capacity to take on the line is huge in Test Rugby Joe and, and he's added that into his game and, and but he's also given himself I think uh, by smart preparation or uh, manipulating the defence he's given himself that opportunity to think a few phases ahead to put himself in position to hit 50-22s, to ha show his kicking game, yeah. but also to show his 
his link play. Uh, Ireland are performing like this as well, we should say, amongst others, without Henshaw, without Gibson Park, without Furlong, Sexton gone after 49 minutes. Um, it's hard not to get a little ahead of ourselves here. Are you increasingly confident that Ireland are going to do something special at the World Cup? Um, they could be, but thankfully I don't buy into that because you've got to live in the know, I think. And when you come, uh, like the the difficulty now is, uh, sorry, not difficulty, but the massive opportunity now is picking 31 to get on the plane becomes very difficult. I watched the numbers, what, 24 to 30 do the fitness before the kickoff yesterday. You had uh, Caelan Blade, you had Keith Earls, you have... Um, there was there was uh, Jimmy O'Brien, um, Larmer. There, there's these guys that are only itching for a go. And then, as you said, you've named a handful of, uh, you know, what I mean, uh, first teamers injured, yeah, first teamers, which yeah. is very different to uh, you bring that in now. And you know I mean, all of a sudden, Finley Beelham won't be too uh, quick to hand over the the bib to to Tyke when there's reps going because he'll be kind of going well. This team is going well, and I'm in it. Same with uh, McCluskey, with with Henshaw, with Bundyaki. You I mean by doing the business in the starting team gives you that uh, validation that I belong in this group. And even when someone like as uh, a world class player like Ty Furland comes back, uh, you cannot underestimate uh, how good that is for your team when you have a world class player, but also you have Beal and pulling out passes that. Uh, we are rarely associate yeah. from any other player, perhaps bar, bar him, but that just shows the environment Farrell has created, O'Connell has created, Cat, Easterby. There's uh, an incredible harmony, I think, between backs and forwards, and uh, it, it was a, it, it's a pleasure to watch. Mm. On the uh, Keenan try, this is uh, probably a semi technical question, which can be hard over the radio, but you can explain it as best you can. Uh, that move was was out of the Joe Schmidt playbook, and and we we would have seen, for instance, uh, Leinster did it against Claremont maybe just over a decade ago, and it was Rob Carney going through the gap instead of Keenan. Uh, the point of difference I saw people uh, made yesterday is that generally these have been off set piece before, whereas actually Ireland managed to put together that that set piece move almost from open play. It was you know I think it was a kick, and I think Doris took it up, and away they went. Is that particularly impressive? Is that unusual? Um. It's actually broke down really well by Murray Kinsella today, actually. So anyone who's into that um, technical, it, it's it's descriptive uh, second by second. So for the rugby nerds out there, it, it's a good read. Mm. Um, but it would, it would usually be off a line out or something, I guess, is the point. But, uh, yeah, very easy to, I suppose, describe, Joe. Like in terms of the line out, you either hit the, a near channel, a middle channel or a wide channel. It's the same. It, it was a reception of a 22 dropout. Yeah. So very easy to understand who's chasing in the blue wall, who's on the chip space and who's in the backfield in Ireland. Uh, you can see it working off the ball. It, it, it's completely pre-planned, pre-scripted. Yes. And but. They'll detail in, you know, I mean, Peter Romani's role and people deep cleaning, uh, not obstructing by, because obviously what happens in a lot of these cases, which will become more prevalent, I think, as we go towards the World Cup, will be, it's hard enough, sorry, it's one thing scoring the try on the pitch, but then it has to be uh, validated by the TMO. So any of that blocking or pulling where yes. you think you've, you've got them becomes open for debate once so you, the try has you, been awarded. You've got you to be subtle, you know, you got to bring in your core, <laughs> yeah. your, your core cuteness and do it that way. Exactly. Very, very uh, subtle. But um, it's, it's another example of not doing the simple things well because look how many times the, you know I mean, the minus one defender doesn't cut under the rock or the two defender has to go forward on the defensive rock every time. But that's what you ask for in an honest environment that the players continuously do that because you don't know yeah. when you're going to be called on. And at that level, it's taking a try like that for Sean Edwards would be would be a, a sickening blow. Yes, yes. Um, no more than when La Rochelle played Leinster in the Champions Cup final. You're a good man to look at a team who are flying and spot a weakness and a way to 
make their lives difficult. When you look at this Irish team, if you were an opposition coach, is there a chink there that you would go after? Uh, there's always chinks. Do I have one offhand? And have I thought about that question? Uh, no, I haven't. But I, I think, um, you, you, like, Ireland still have to be not at peak, but they have to be uh, on to be expecting to win these games. All of a sudden, sudden no. Um, there'll be this assumption, you know what I mean, that the England game, and, and that happened, I know, a few years ago, where everyone was talking about how much, how many points would Ireland put in England. England won. Mm. And that's not too much of a distant memory, I think. Mm. Um, the game, obviously, that's becoming hugely interesting now is, is Scotland in Murrayfield, because home advantage is big. Um, and they're, they're absolutely tails are up. So that becomes a juicy game. And, yeah. um, but, um, like, um, I think France missed Dante. I don't think they had that kind of uh, attacking threat to, to to do damage in, in in the Ireland's midfield like they have done in the past. Um, and um, there's always areas entries into 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 the team, but yeah. where Ireland I think are excelling at the minute is that they're they're very much a threat with the ball, uh, either through uh, a battering game or uh, l lovely little uh, bits of deception. Yes. Uh, I'm going to do something terrible here and take the Italy game for granted, OK? Uh, I'm thinking back to 09 against Scotland. Kidney rested a few players and it was a touch squeaky for a few minutes in that game, but Ireland got the job done. Do you suspect Farrell will go full strength Murrayfield? Um... Yeah, exactly. But like, that's the beauty of of having the decision. Like, do you want to finish with your best twenty three? Sorry, fifteen or, or start your best fifteen? And I think now we have got to the stage where there is a difficult selection meeting about what is your um, your best fifteen and what is uh, your best fifteen to start and what is your best fifteen uh, to finish the game. You look at McCloskey, yeah, he's taken his chance very well. Does it weaken the team starting Bundyaki or Robbie Henshaw? You know, there's different rules for probably the Gibson Park, uh, Henshaw, Furlong, who have a lot of credit in the bank. Yeah, but I'd, I'd, count um, all, I'd almost count all of those as full strength. I'm talking about, uh, he's not going to go more extreme than that and give like, you know, third man, fourth man opportunity. He, he's going to go out to win this Grand Slam full bore. Oh yeah, most definitely. But I think... You don't really need to do that. I think what you can do in terms of, you know, if you have 10 backs that are rotating, maybe uh, there might be two, two changes in the 10 backs and there might be, of the 13 forwards, there might be uh, 11 of the same. So yes. that's four is quite, a, is quite um, expected, but also smart yes, in the yes. fact that, you know, well, some of them are going to be injury enforced in the fact that we have, obviously, Ty Byrne is go looks like he's in trouble. Uh, but, you know I mean, I think it was it Ryan Baird who was doing uh, fitness yesterday uh, before the game. Like, someone like him is can be in, in, in a test environment, a big, big weapon. Uh, a quick last one. It was a point of controversy. What was your reading on the, the Antonio hit on Herring? Was that a red for you? Oh, I knew you. I knew you couldn't give me a smooth interview. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Uh, well, see, I, I asked that almost thinking that it's a simple answer. No. No, because it's incredibly complicated by the by the rule book, isn't it? In terms of mitigation and where was first contact? If first contact was to the f uh, head, it's a red card. And could we say in this instance there was joint contact with head and? Body maybe, and therefore head was in in, in joint first place. So it's no, red. because even my attitude and that is that we're trying to improve players' safety. That is the number one importance going forward. Mm. Um, well, then it's a red. Um, then it's then it's um, yeah, because uh, Rob Herring got a got a shot to the head and went off with a brain injury. So it's it's. Technically a red. When you say technically a red, there that makes me think like in your 
in your rugby soul you don't feel it should be a red um no because it's very very complicated the um the the rulings but to eliminate all doubt about this winnie has got to go lower yeah and, and that's what, the message i said to him yesterday you've got to go lower and and why do you think they're not go like you know he's a big man he, even just a fraction lower should be very doable why do you, why do you think he's going in so high still when he knows the probable consequence because i don't think that they they think like that, John. This is getting interesting now because of the fact the mindset of defending players is try and get a shot on, try and bury this guy back over from where he came. By doing that, there's a focus on, you know what I mean, can I dislodge the ball or can I essentially uh, make a huge impact in this tackle that this guy, I'm going to shudder him. And when you're that size, you have that capacity to do, yes, uh, as proved yesterday, you get your timing wrong and you, you look for trouble. Mm. And because the point the point would be asked. So I mean, you you would see him obviously on a on a daily basis. The point would be asked of of coaches generally. You know, God, at this stage, are they not being coached to go lower? Are they still being coached to hit high like that? That'd be the the people would wonder that about defence coaches and, and like are you are you emphasising that on a daily basis, fellas? You got to go low. Um. No, because I don't think you should go low there. Lower, well, chest height. Yeah, chest height is isn't low. That's high. Okay, and so why aren't so, you why, why why aren't you advocating midriff? Sorry, that, that uh, uh, what I'm trying to do there is so he's got to decide early. Does yeah. he Does he want to try and make that a mall call, which gives a scrum to France, or in my case, a scrum to La Rochelle? Yeah. Okay, so that's his decision making. He sees an isolated runner coming at speed. And then he goes, OK, he's going too fast to try and stop him. So I'm going to try and he's whatever, 100 kg. I'm 145 kg. I want to buckle this guy. Yeah. So like when you're discussing it on radio um, or no, it, it, it's it seems very simple. Yet when you put it into practice, yeah. it's it, it, it isn't as simple as you think, because everyone says, well, what are they coaching during the week? We're coaching loads of things, but like there are huge. It's a very little interest to me as a coach for 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 me to recommend Winnie Antonio to chop tackle Rob Herring so the rock becomes less than a one second rock. Yes. I don't see any advantage in that. What you're trying to do is slow up the ball, so it becomes uh, so interesting. Um, slash difficult slash what message am I trying to get across to my players yes. because no scenario is exactly the same yet player safety is of huge importance and I get that and you can't uh, do what Winnie did yesterday that's you know I mean if it isn't uh, a yellow card it's a red card and he probably um, could be upgraded to a red card I hope not but yeah. that's that's no what's at stake from one action which has huge consequences yes now that's, that's and that's a very fair answer and you've explained it is more complicated than than first glance for sure uh final thought because i probably kept you too long um ireland in great nick here and it does feel like you know grand slams are rare and, and ireland have three in their history this feels like golden opportunity you'd make them favorites at this at this point wouldn't you uh, they've earned that and i think their performances have put them there and that's what they're doing I think they're taking every 80 minutes on a on a one off which is all you need to do you look at it it's uh, Italy Scotland England um, and there is most definitely a huge opportunity in, in front of them and when you say like it's only three grand slams it's 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 quite staggering really oh, how yeah. I suppose the ease of which they have uh uh, performed in the first two games but it changes very quickly in sport as you know going to Murrayfield I think will be uh, a little bit more trickier than than um, probably um, people imagine yeah I suspect you're right uh, listen brilliant analysis thank you so much good to talk to you